uh, your PE stock exchange, and it's a highly secure environment. I'm probably going through five or six firewalls to get out of here. So pray that the presentation will work without a hitch. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, uh, it may surprise you that most of the uh, the, 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 the Deutsche Börse operates uh, the largest stock exchanges worldwide, and most of the economy of the world is depending on the reliable operation of the stock exchange. And it's based on InfiniBand right now, and uh, we are migrating, we're trying to migrate to uh, Ethernet using Rocky. And so I've been uh, leading that effort to stabilize InfiniBand after we had some crashes in 2020 with the RDMA technology with the Fabric Manager. And uh, now I've, I've worked on a prototype and on the protocol issues that came about uh, by pr prototyping these things. We've had numerous fixes to the kernel subsystem and various vendor interactions to make this all possible. And uh, this is about one issue uh, that is still remaining. I think that's a basic conceptual issue that we often deal with and that we're still having to make progress on, uh, which is the multicast congestion control. Um, typically, um, the congestion control uh, is only seen to work with unicast, and many people are using Rocky within a unicast mode, but Rocky version 2 also supports multicast. And financial applications usually use multicast extensively because that allows uh, event propagation in a fair way to multiple endpoints at uh, the same time, so that they can all have the same information at the same time and can react to changes in financial values, for example. Um, so this is essential and we cannot really work without that. And so we are now trying to uh, get this operational uh, with uh, uh, RDMA on Ethernet using Rocky version 2. Um, so this is, um, well, can you see this? Hopefully uh, there's two PCs here, uh, three PCs and there's a switch in the middle. This is how unicast uh, congestion control works on uh, Rocky. So the, the two machines with the, blue, with the green arrows send data to the switch. And if they send enough data, then the link to the other one on the uh, right-hand side will, with the red arrow will be oversubscribed. Uh, if that's the case, uh, then there is a CE bit set in the TCP header, uh, IP header that is then uh, used by the endpoint uh, to recognize the S congestion. And then it will send a congestion notification packet to the sender to slow down the senders to and so that the red arrow connection will start being going overloaded. And that is a mechanism that avoids packet loss and avoids uh, large recovery times and avoids uh, performance uh, uh, bottlenecks in the switch fabric for unicast. Um, just same thing in a better way, okay. <laughs> um, okay. And so this is controlled by various parts in the IBTA spec. There is the ECNCE signaling that is taken from TCP and the, the RFC that, that is describing the signaling uh, is taken out of context. And uh, we were just saying that we use ECN for UDP or uh, connections using Rocky and that we do ECN also for UDP, which was not designed to at, in the first place. But that is actually what we're doing for Unicast. And then we can send the connection notification packets as seen on the diagram to slow down the senders. Uh, and we do that via custom uh, logic in, uh, on the RD, on the Orky version two uh, protocol layer uh, to stop the senders. And that works on a per flow basis. Then we also have a link lower layer flow control on the, on the whole interface. So we can uh, stop all the traffic necessary. That is a bit particularly necessary if you have multiple senders, let's say you have 10 senders that all ramp up and start immediately sending at full bandwidth. At that point, the CMP slowdown mechanism doesn't work and you need to do some violence to the link to stop the flow and allow the CMP mechanism to come up to a spec uh, and avoid the loss of packets. And so the specification says that Rocky handling should be lossless. Uh, and this, this lossless uh, behavior is realized by the CMP packets as well by the link layer flow control. Uh, if I'm going too fast, just tell me uh, if you have any questions, interrupt me, no problem. I can just go in depth in any of these things if you want. So the multicast is often something that people are not familiar with. And uh, so a little bit of uh, an explanation how this works. So let's say you have four PCs here. And how this works is there are specialized addresses on the fabric. It's called the multicast address. And these are not addresses of single endpoints, but they uh, describe a group of endpoints. 
the endpoints can subscribe to that address and it will then tra receive traffic that is sent to that address. For example, the left-hand side PC is now sending one uh, datagram and it is forwarded by the switch simultaneously to three other, other machines that all have subscribed to this multicast address. And this allows the three machines to receive the same data at the same time uh, uh, and process that in a, in a fair way. If we would use unicast, then we have to, would have to go one after the other. First, we would send to the first one, then the second one to the third one. And then the first one would have an advantage over the other ones. So the multicast IP addresses are magic. They can uh, describe whole groups of um, unicast endpoints that would have to receive the traffic. And this has been around since the 80s, and it's actually described in some early RFCs and is used uh, extensively on IP-based uh, fabrics. And InfiniBand actually made big strides towards a lossless operation of uh, uh, datagram application. And this is described also in the IB specification. And uh, there is a special RDMA API to manage multicast subscription that is distinct from uh, the, the kernel level, IP level stuff. And these are specialized calls like RDMA join multicast and RDMA leave multicast. So an RDMA endpoint can subscribe to arbitrary IP addresses to receive traffic sent to these special IP addresses. And so there's a special IP version 4 range reserved for this. And we have various protocols that manage the multicast recipients. IGMP is most, most well known. Then the PIM uh, sparse dense protocols that are widely used. Uh, and in Fluminant, we have the subtle manager that's doing this. And uh, so we have also a specialized uh, MAC address range that can be used in Ethernet. Uh, if it starts with 01 00 5e, then it's one of these magic uh, IP addresses. And in IP version 6, we have a specialized prefix that is reserved for multicast. So if an IP version 6 address starts with OXFF00, then you know it's a specialized magic uh, IP address that goes to multiple endpoints. Uh, in um, in InfiniBand, we have the MLITs, multicast lits, as well as the multicast gits, and they operate uh, on multiple uh, endpoints uh, and not on single ones. So the current handling of multicast congestion that what we've seen is the following. Uh, so we have the two endpoints that send to the switch. There is no setting of the CE marker. So packets get lost there because there is no way for the endpoint to know that there is congestion. Um, there is no condition notification effects being sent. And so what we have today is basically uh, an application that cannot use the full bandwidth. If we wanted to make, it, make this work successfully, then the uh, endpoints on the, the senders on the left-hand side must be uh, restricted to not use the full bandwidth of the switch. They can only use a part of it so that it's not possible to overstrive, subscribe the switch so that the uh, packet delivery becomes uh, reliable. And this is pretty bad because you know you have maybe a hundred gig link and you can only use one gig because otherwise you're going to destroy, potentially destroy one of the endpoints. So that's not good. So we want to fix this. So um, this is not the same thing I described again. Um, so the proposal here is to how to do this is simply make this stuff work for multicast. Um, we actually have also one vendor actually that allows uh, the um, uh, priority flow control to work. And with that, uh, we can actually do some uh, congestion management on a very brutal uh, all, uh, all traffic on, an, on a basically linked level. Uh, and with that, we can actually do reliable uh, multicast already. But we cannot do uh, reliable, uh, reliableness on a clear connection basis like it's possible with Rocky version 2 on unicast. And so we'd like to change that. Um, what one thing is we'd like to add uh, some text to the IBDA spec stating that it is OK to use multicast with ECN. And it is OK to use flow control uh, with uh, multicast, because uh, some of the vendors right now just don't do this. Uh, for example, uh, Cisco has a specialized multicast queue. And it will not you apply flow control or even traffic classifications to multicast packets. So this whole mechanism is defeated under on Cisco switches. So then the question is, uh, is it a violation of the standard if you would mark multicast traffic with a CE bit? 
And so we looked at the uh, various uh, standards and to see if this is, would be legit to do. Um, and so there, there's RFC 3168, which defines, defines the ACN. Uh, and RFC 3168 explicitly mentions the ability of ECN to be used for unreliable and reliable multicast protocols. So the authors of the ECN technology already envisioned the use of this stuff for multicast. We should actually do this. And then we would have to all uh, solve. It's just, just probably just a uh, hesitancy by the vendors that this has not been implemented. Um, then we have the uh, issues here with the uh, Rocky multicast, where the ECN uh, packet magnification causes a congestion notification packet to be sent back. And with multicast, now the packet is not only sent to one endpoint, but potentially to multiple endpoints that all maybe are other subscribed and maybe sending multiple con uh, condition notification packets back. And so this is standardized here uh, also in the IBTA spec. The IBTA spec does not restrict this mechanism to a unicast. Uh, it, it will be straightforward to actually apply that to multicast. So if you just uh, explain to the vendors that this is okay, they could probably implement that and it would work. Um, one of the problems that I mentioned earlier is if you do this, then uh, you replicate the packet to, multiple, to potentially thousands of endpoints and they all may have uh, uh, this EBIT set and they all may reply with CNP. So we may have a issue of CNP flooding. And uh, so what we, we looked at the uh, way this stuff is handled in the existing implementations by Melanox, and it seems that there is already a rate control in the, uh, in the switches as well as in the senders. So the senders will not react if you send too many CNPs to it to slow it down. It will not do excessive slowdowns. And the switches can also suppress uh, CNP floods to uh, make sure that the senders are not being restricted. This may not be tuned the right way, and we may have to do something on that level. But the rest of the mechanism should be working without a problem. And then we also need flow control for multicast. So this is basically just there's too much data coming down the pike, and we're sending a post frame to the switch, and the switch will stop, stop and start buffering the stuff until we say, can you can continue to send? That works uh, with certain vendor switches, but not with Cisco switches. And that's one of the, of the problems that we are talking to the vendors uh, about. And this is pretty just, just a one-to-one -one issue between the switch and the endpoint. This is not a multi-hop uh, uh, issue like the uh, uh, ECN problems. And here again, we're going into the standards and the RFC does not specify that this is restricted to unicast. It, it, it talks about all traffic. So uh, we talked with the vendors and told them, well, there's no restriction here. When, if you do not do this for multicast, then I'm, technically you are in violation of the RFC because all traffic is not being stopped by the PFCs. So you're making exception for multicast. That is uh, a key issue that we have with the uh, Cisco's right now. And so that is basically how we want to do this. And then we have to test various switches of vendors and see how they handle the Rocky 2 congestion control. So um, these are the switches that we have. And we've tested unicast and multicast uh, congestion control. And it all works very well on Cisco and NVIDIA for unicast. Uh, on NVIDIA, we can do the multicast PFC, uh, the flow control works fine. Uh, the CNP does not. We've talked with NVIDIA and we're working on getting this implemented with them. They say it would be possible. Uh, we've just met yesterday with uh, Cisco. Cisco uh, can do the multicast PFC maybe with some modifications in the current ASIC. They're looking at it, uh, but they will make it for sure possible with the next ASIC. They can support CNP, they say, but they haven't been implemented, have not imp implemented this yet. Uh, so we expect that well, in a couple of months, we, at least we will have the condition notification packets working with Cisco's and potentially also with NVIDIA, which only may uh, cause a multi-year delay for the priority flow control, congestion control that we still need. Uh, we've had been in contact with Arista too, and the head uh, tech guy, David Snowden, said that this should work but we haven't had uh, time to acquire and test this yet. 
And one of the things also, also that this must also work with the uh, NICs, because the NIC needs to inspect the packet and see that the EC input is set and then send the condensed notification packet. And so we tested the various uh, NICs to see if they support Rocky Vision 2 multicast. The NVIDIA uh, cards did, did that. And the Intel cards did do receive Rocky Vision 2 multicast. They did only send multicast packets on loopback locally. They did not send it all to the network. Uh, remote send did not work. So we have a patches for testing this. Uh, to make this work, just basically fix this to the upstream drivers that still have to be merged. That's really have to verify that to make Intel uh, work with Rocky version 2 multicast sense. Uh, we also bought a Broadcom card and nothing worked until we looked, then we looked into the source code and we saw that there is no multicast support at all in the Linux source tree. So this is not working at all. So we also had some issues with the testing tools because uh, the uh, existing InfiniBand multicast testing tools fall back to broadcast instead of multicast when you run them on Rocky. So we wrote some new testing tools that are on the, on the GitHub project here that I'm showing. And uh, there, is, there we have uh, senders as well as receivers available to test the multicast traffic and to test the congestion control. And there's a special tool from MC Listen, MC Sender. And we hope to make this a part of the RDMA core libraries at some point and uh, make this part of the Sender tools. And then the rest is just liability stuff and things. So uh, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Lameter? Don't see any questions on chat. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.